So the fall numbers are in and unsurprisingly, we've had declines on a month to month basis since the beginning of the year. However, this is the first time in 2022 that we have a decline in average price compared to last year. And in this video, we're gonna cover all of that. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Danilo from the King Realty Group. In this video, we're gonna cover the monthly stats of September 2022 and how it compares to last year, and also how it compares to the previous months. This is gonna give you some insights on what's going on in our marketplace here in the GTA, and it's something that I review every single month for you guys to enjoy and uh, have a better understanding of what's going on in our marketplace. So like I said at the beginning of the video, you know, it's unsurprising uh, that we've had a decline month over month since the beginning of the year. Everyone knows that we're, you know, maybe over 25% down in a lot of markets here in the GTA when it comes to housing price. However, this is the first month that we've had a decline on a year over year basis because since the beginning of the year, we've still been above 2021. So that's gonna be very interesting to take a look at. And what might surprise you is that on a month to month basis, we're actually starting to level out and uh, we actually do have slight increases from the month of August. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at here is our uh, graph chart, which shows us where we are today. Um, and it's a nice visual. So you can kind of see how things have progressed. So let's uh, open that up. Okay, so I just pulled up the chart and this is actually a really nice representation of what's been going on in our marketplace since 2018. This actually tracks a month to month change since then. And you see the real estate market has its ups and downs. And then you also see that at the beginning of this year, we had a little bit of a steep incline in price point. And then for five months in a row, we actually declined. Uh, and as you see here in uh, July, 2022, this is when we actually started, I would say maybe flattening out. And we actually are now more so in line with the increase in value that we normally see here in the GTA, cutting out basically the increases that we had over the last few months. So since July, you saw that we kind of had a bit of an increase in August and we had the same sort of thing here in September. Um, so that's very interesting to see. What I'm gonna pull up now is the month to month numbers so that you have a you know better picture of uh, what the change has been over the last couple months. Okay, so let me pull that up. Okay, so here we're looking at our month to month change in price we're taking a look at august to september and this is kind of how it all breaks down um, now i said at the beginning of the, of the video that uh, we've had a decline in year over year price but it's interesting to note that our month over month prices have actually gone up a bit since uh, august 2022 uh, one thing that's definitely apparent here is that our sales volume has slightly dropped which is kind of weird because uh, in the summertime, usually activity is a little bit uh, slower. And in September, October, the fall months, it tends to pick up a bit. Just anecdotally, like I'm seeing a lot more activity for certain properties. There is multiple offers going on a little bit more than I saw over the last few months, which is interesting. But in these numbers, we see that was actually fewer sales uh, for all different types of property compared to August. So you see that, um, you know, almost double digit uh, decline in, in sales on a month to month basis. But again, it's a month to month change, doesn't necessarily indicate a trend. The interesting thing is that the average price from August compared to September 2022 has actually increased. Semi detach is leading the way here with 4.47%. On the detached side, it is slightly down. But if you notice last month, that was actually the only property type in August that ended up going higher than uh, July. So that's still interesting. So on the detached side, guys, we have 1.369 million as an average price. Uh, semi detaches are 1.04, so we've crossed over that 1 million mark in September. Townhomes, we have it at 901,000, and condos are sitting about 730,000, approximately on the average price. So again, interesting to note that on a month to month basis, at least for semis, towns, and condos, we've actually got up in price slightly from August 2022. And we've actually, on an average price perspective, we've gone up slightly as well, just under 1% from August. So it's very interesting to note. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, again, you gotta kinda take these things with a grain of salt. It's um, a month to month change, so not necessarily um, indicating a trend, but we did see in the graph chart that from July, August, and now September, we've kind of had a little bit of a flat line, slightly increasing over the last couple of months, which is interesting to see. Now let's take a look at our uh, year over year, because that is what I mentioned was the biggest change in these September numbers compared to the rest of the year. So I'm gonna just pop that up here. We see here that the average price has actually declined about 4% from September 2021. So this is the first month that uh, we've seen a decline on a year over year basis. And I'll scroll down here to kind of show you these 
percentages. On the sales side, we've also, we've dropped quite a bit as well. Around 8,000 per month is what on average we expect to see in terms of sales volume here in the GTA. We're about 5,000 and I did note that over the last few months, we we're kind of around the same sort of number. So definitely there's a lot less activity, a lot less buying or closed transactions happening. And in this case, it's about a 44% drop since last year, which is kind of in line with declines on a year over year basis that we've seen over the last few months. The average price though you see here, it's actually down 4.3% from September of last year. Usually the fall market is where things start to pick up again and where you start noticing that, um, you know, we have more volume and sometimes uh, more price is or, or higher uh, price points as well. We did see that on a month to month basis, price has gone up slightly, but year over year, uh, this is the first month that we've seen a decline. Let's see if we continue down that path over the, in the next few months to come. Looking at new listings, active listings. So new listings has dropped from uh, last year. So that's interesting to note. So there's actually new inventory on the market in the month of September. Active listings definitely are higher though at a 47.3% percentile, which means that there's just more on the market. That's more selection for buyers. And uh, that is in line as well with our month of inventory, which we've seen now to be a little bit higher. We're actually crossing into a more balanced market now uh, versus a seller's market, which we've kind of been in for the last few years. Listing days on the market up about 64%. So the P days on the market, this is uh, also when properties get removed off and these get listed back on. If you've been tracking the market, you've kind of noticed sometimes people are trying to set up an offer date, price the property lower than market value. They'll see if they can get buyers, which is kind of a strategy that has worked in the past, but is not working all the time now. So a lot of the times that doesn't work. And what happens is that the listing gets removed off the marketplace and they relist it at a higher price point, closer to the price that they were expecting. Okay. So this number here, this last line here, it represents those listings as well. This also includes listings that have been removed and come back onto the market and that's shot up about 84%. So we're closer now, we're getting a lot closer to, you know, almost a 30 day on the market for most listings. Interestingly enough, uh, you know, we've had a few listings over the last little while and we've sold them in less than a month. So it does really depend on the listing, on your marketing, and maybe the strategy you're selecting for your price. And you gotta just be realistic, okay, compared to maybe what you would have expected in the past. All right guys, so uh, we've just reviewed our chart. We saw that over the last at least two months, we've had almost like a flat month over month uh, change in price, slightly on the upside. And we saw that on a month to month basis that that is true. We have pretty much an increase, slight increase about a percent or so in most cases or a little bit less than a percent increase from the previous month, which is interesting to note. And we've also seen that on a year to year basis, now for the first time, we've had a drop of 4.3% uh, from September, 2021, which is also an interesting thing to note. Just to leave off guys, I wanted to give you a couple insights. You know, with our buyers right now, we are seeing uh, more selection. However, we are seeing sellers, you know, price things well, and any property that has a good list price and that is still a really nice property seems to still be getting demand. I mean, I've seen a property get over over 20 offers recently that property only sold 50,000 over ask you know it's not like in the past where you saw 100,000 over 200,000 over like we're not necessarily seeing that people are still listing maybe a little bit slightly under market um, and if it's a really nice property there's still some demand and, you know with our buyers we've even lost out on bidding wars in the last little while and it seems to be that nice property that pops up amongst others that are sitting sometimes is able to actually get some traction in the first couple weeks and it sometimes just goes right like something that's nice ends up selling pretty quickly so that's another message for buyers that the activity is still happening people are aware now that we're in a higher interest rate environment another thing to keep in mind is in October 26 the Bank of Canada is gonna make another interest rate decision and uh, we've already heard from them that most likely it's going to go up again. If you're a buyer in the marketplace right now, it's probably good to see if you can get a locked in rate at the moment, knowing that, um, you know, what the monthly cost is going to be for the purchase. Uh, that's another really important piece as well, because, you know, we are uh, going to be locking in a higher interest rate. And so you just need to be okay with the monthly and you need to be aware that maybe if you do a five year term, for example, towards the end of that five year term, you may end up paying lower on your monthly on a monthly basis as well. So you just got to be comfortable with what you're buying and you got to be comfortable with your expense on a monthly basis. That's kind of the key thing. You are going to be buying a property at a, a lower price point than you would have maybe even September of last year. So that's actually really good to get in at a better price. I think I kind of value that more than getting into a better interest rate. Interest rates do fluctuate, but the price that you get at the beginning, that sticks, right? And it, and it, and it allows you to create a little bit more equity. Obviously prices have gone up in all markets at a much higher rate. 
And so it is possible to be able to, over the up upcoming years, reach that same level again. And so it's nicer to get into a lower price point in order to be able to build that equity going forward. So um, uh, for the sellers, uh, so you, you heard me just now, right? Like. If your property is looking nice, if you're selecting the right strategy in terms of price, you may still get even multiple offers. You may get uh, some pretty good activity over the first couple of weeks. But you need to be choosing the right strategy and you can't cut any corners. Only, I'm only seeing the properties that have really nice marketing, really nice staging, photos, video, etc. Those are the ones that are that end up selling quicker than other properties that are sitting on the market. You gotta be realistic about the price point. You gotta work with uh, your agent or get in touch with us to get a better idea of what's going on in your micro market and houses that are comparable to yours. Um, what has sold over the last like you know 30 uh 60 days and what has sold a year ago because a year ago you're seeing now prices are kind of in line so i'm almost taking a look at you know august september october of 2021 as well to kind of give us an idea of where our price might be and you just got to be realistic with those numbers so get in touch guys and uh, we'll be able to help you out with the value of your property because i know a lot of people are curious okay investors uh yeah i mean we're seeing deals out there uh for sure and uh, we're able to cash flow even with uh, today's interest rates, uh, which is very interesting. So, I mean, if you're somebody who's willing to do some renovations, we can pick up properties that have separate entrances that need kitchens and then need that need that second unit um, at a pretty good rate. And uh, you just gotta put in the work to uh, get the apartment in. And properties that do already have the setup, I mean, we're still finding things in that six to $700,000 range. Uh, rents are higher than they were in the last little while, possibly due to the fact that a lot of buyers are getting out of the marketplace and switching to renting. The rental rates are strong. So what I've noticed is that even though you're paying six, $700,000 for a property with a 20% down, uh, more than likely you can actually cash flow positive uh, anywhere between $500 per month. And in some cases, even up to a thousand bucks per month. So those things are existing. And if you're thinking about kind of uh, going against the grain, uh, most people are sitting on the sidelines waiting for, who knows, they're waiting for to see if interest rates stabilize, waiting to see if prices continue dropping. I mean, now is kind of a moment where you may not be competing against a lot of other people. You might be able to get a property at a good rate and you're gonna think about buying a property for the long term, not something that you're gonna flip in a few months or in a year, uh, something you're gonna buy long term. And when you do the math, you see that you're able to cash flow. So guys, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you know, I would really do appreciate you hopping on these videos. I think at the end of the day, um, if you have any question related to this sort of stuff, Put a pause on the video and drop the comment below. I think that it might be helpful for us to be able to answer your question live on YouTube. Um, and it's gonna benefit anybody else who's watching as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, obviously you can reach out to us with the contact info below as well. Uh, definitely hit the like and subscribe button to get uh, these notifications into the future. All right, it's Daniel from King Realty. Thanks so much for sticking around and you guys have a great day. Take care.